Hey Rebel Emmer, Salim Rezai here. So I wanna talk about this trial that just got published called the refill trial. So I'll put a link, a QR code for you on the screen so that you can go to our blog post slash podcast on the topic. But I just wanted to make a quick little video here about the paper and what it means in terms of practice for us. So this was a randomized clinical trial done in the UK, and the authors were basically trying to answer a simple question. Does pre-hospital pack red blood cells and lyophilized plasma resuscitation, is that superior to 0.9% saline solution for trauma-related hemorrhagic shock? So I already said, randomized clinical trial done in the UK. Patients were randomized in a one-to-one -one fashion, basically to either pack red blood cells and lyophilized plasma, up to two units of each, given in a staggered one-to-one -one kind of technique or 0.9% saline up to a liter given in 250 cc aliquots. Their primary outcome was kind of interesting, compositive mortality and lactate clearance. Not equal outcomes, we'll talk about that in just a second, but mortality was basically defined as death at any time between injury and discharge and impaired lactate clearance was less than 20% per hour in the first two hours after randomization or both. Now, who did they include in this trial? These were adult patients, which in the UK are 16 years of age or older. And then they had to have trauma-related shock and hypotension, which they defined as a systolic blood pressure of less than 90 millimeters of mercury or the absence of a palpable radial pulse. So the results. Just over 430 patients got randomized. And when we look at that composite primary outcome of mortality and or lactate clearance, it was achieved in 64% in the blood product arm and 65% in the 0.9% saline arm. Basically, there was no statistical difference whether you gave saline or you gave blood products. So what do we do with this? So I think we already established that the trial didn't demonstrate that pre-hospital blood products uh, was superior to 0.9% saline from trauma-related hemorrhagic shock, at least in a civilian population my issues with this study. So first of all, composite outcome with unequal outcomes. It's a funny primary outcome. Like I don't think lactate clearance is the same as somebody dying. One is patient oriented and the other one is lab oriented. I've never had a patient ask me, hey, did my lactate clear? Um, but I certainly have people ask me about morbidity and mortality. So why do we think this trial failed to show benefit with blood products because it's a sound physiologic principle. If you're losing blood, replace blood. I have a few thoughts on this. So the first is, is that this study took place in a civilian setting with an established major trauma network. So in other words, the pre-hospital system is a little bit different than we have here in the US. They have critical care that's provided at the scene of the incident by critical care physicians. So it's maybe that they were just doing the basics so well that any other adjunct they were gonna add wasn't really gonna make that much of a difference. Second theory, there was a huge proportion of these patients that got transported in less than 20 minutes. In other words, from scene to the ER of 20 minutes. Maybe we're not gonna see a benefit of anything that's done for less than 20 minutes, and maybe that's why we didn't see a benefit. Another issue is that the majority of these patients were blunt traumatic injuries, not penetrating in injuries. Um, and so maybe it's that blunt trauma doesn't gain as much benefit as penetrating trauma. I can't really answer the question because here's the thing. 80% of these patients were blunt trauma patients. Only 20% were penetrating. And actually, if you look, only nine patients or 6% in the saline group had a hemoglobin concentration of less than eight. Again, maybe short transport times, maybe it's that giving a 250 up to a liter of fluids or blood isn't gonna make that much of a difference. So what's the bottom line for me? Well, this trial basically didn't show any improved mortality or lactate clearance when using pack red blood cells and lyophilized plasma compared to 0.9% saline in a pre-hospital setting of trauma-related hemorrhagic shock. Now, there might be patient populations where we would see benefit maybe longer transport times, like remote settings, maybe where there's more penetrating trauma, where people are actually bleeding out. And maybe it's that this study was just simply not large enough. It wasn't powered well enough. There have been two other trials looking at blood products, Combat and Pamper, um, that also looked at this question and had mixed results as well. 
And so I think the literature on this is still pretty mixed. I don't think it's time to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I think as far as resuscitating our patients appropriately, there's a couple of themes here. Number one, do the basics right. Don't worry about all the crazy cool stuff that we could potentially do. You'll hear people talk about like Reboa and all these other things. Just do the basics right. Number two is, is that, I don't know, less than 20 minute transport times, maybe it's just better to stabilize the patient and get them to a facility where there's more man and woman power. It's not that the pre-hospital teams aren't doing a good job, it's just you're limited in terms of the setting that you're in. And number three is, is that I would continue giving blood products to these patients until better evidence comes out or we have a large enough study that gives us a primary outcome that actually matters, that's patient oriented, like just mortality and not lab oriented values like clearing lactate. Anyways, that's my thoughts on it. I'd love to hear your comments and questions. Please let me know down in the comments. Until next time.